Hello everyone, welcome to my third video for my Lua tutorial series. Today I'm going to give you a basic introduction on functions, um, how arguments work, and how to create your own functions. Um, so simply just to give a quick summary of what a function is, um, it's commonly referred to as an abstraction. Um, so essentially what you're doing is you have a list of steps and you are going to take these steps and you want to reuse these steps over and over and over again. So you want to basically set them aside in code so you can use them and perhaps pass in different values to them um, without having to retype 10 or 15 steps depending on what the function does. A really good example of this is whenever you're trying to draw, for example, a rectangle. Um, a rectangle, you have uh, the, the surface library, which does surface.drawRect, and you pass in the x position, the y position, the width, and the height. Um, you could go into the core and take what that does and take out all five or six however so steps and repeat those every single time but that's not efficient that's not the best way to um, code your program so you want to make sure that you use um, functions whenever it is necessary sometimes uh, you don't want to go ahead and just create as many functions as you can because in reality that might not be as good as whenever you only need to create three to get the job done um, so to start off whenever you create a function uh, you can have a global or a local function. This is the same way, um, or sorry, this is the same idea of local and global variables. If you have a local function, it is only accessible within the file um, and below of where it's created. So if I create a local function that says addition, right, this function will not exist on line two, three, four, and one. And it won't exist in our client side, for one, because it's a server side function, but additionally because it is local. And it won't exist in our shared because it's local. So it is not accessible by other files. So if I went ahead and took away local, now in any other server side file, I could call addition. Um, you can't call it in client because this is a server side function, but you can call it in shared because shared is both server and client. Okay, so real quick, this is our function and it's called addition. If I just write print, um, you called addition and I save it. And then we go, oh, pardon me, in game. You can see we have nothing in our console. And the reason for this is because we have basically set this code aside. Like how I was saying earlier, when we have an extraction, we're putting things to the side for later use. Right now, this is not being used at all. So the way we call this is by typing out the name of the function and then using parentheses. So just know whenever you see parentheses, this is directly related to a function. For example, if you see on this print, we have parentheses because print is a function and we're calling print and we're passing in an argument, which just so happens to be the string of what we're gonna print out. So this right here is our declaration. You can see we have parentheses because we are declaring a function. Same thing with include, this is a function, so we have the parentheses. So that's a nice way to identify them whenever you're learning the syntax for Lua. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this now since I am now calling addition. And now you can see you called addition. Now that's really great, but what if we want to add in some numbers? So what we can do is we can create arguments. So inside here, what we're going to do is we're going to create two arguments, num a and num b. Okay. And now whenever we call addition, we can pass in a value for num a and num b. Similar to how print, we're passing in a value for the text that's going to be printed out. So whenever we call addition, we can put in two values separated by commas. So the first value that I put in is going to be 15, which will assign the value 15 to num a. And then for the second value, I'm going to put 30. So now if I save this, you'll notice that there's no real difference. It does the same thing. It's because we've assigned values to these variables, but we're not really doing anything with them. So now what we can do is we can go like this. We can say print num a comma num b. So now this is going to print out both of these values. So now you can see 15 and 30. And you can obviously see that num a is obviously 15 and num b is obviously 30 because they're separated. Um, and whenever you pass in values into a function, it can't, it's not limited to just numbers. It can be strings, um, integers, uh, tables, other functions. Whenever you pass in functions that aren't necessarily declared, those are called anonymous functions, but we'll get into that later. Um, so now, we're going to make this addition function actually do something. So now instead of printing num a comma num b, what we're going to do is we're going to print num a plus num b. And we're going to save it. So now you can see 45, all right? And that's kind of useful, but we're going to make it print out a little bit nicer. So we're going to say num a 
plus, and we're going to concatenate these values. Num b equals, and then here we're going to put num a plus num b. So what I just did there was I said, okay, we're going to get the value of num a. We're going to put it right here. Then we're going to concatenate a string onto it, which is going to be the plus sign. Then from there, we're going to concatenate this with num b. So it's going to say num a plus num b. So 15 plus 30. Then we're going to concatenate an equal sign. And then we're going to concatenate, finally, the sum of num a plus num b. So if I go ahead and save this now, you can see 15 plus 30 equals 45. That's great. But what if I want to do different numbers at a different time? So I could go here and I could say 100 plus 1,000. Go ahead and I can see we have both 15 plus 30 equals 45 and 100 plus 1,000 equals 1,100. So that's a quick example of some form of arguments with a simple function. Um, you can also pass in player objects. So if you ever want to create a function that's specific to the player, um, to apply certain things to them, you definitely can. Uh, we're going to get more advanced functions later, but this is going to be just a nice quick introduction. Um, another thing to keep in mind, though, um, just to cover the realms real quick, since this is a server-side function, if I go in here in my client-side file and I call addition and I say 47 and 30, I'm going to save this. I'm going to go in game, you see, attempt to call global addition a nil value. Uh-oh, how do I get this? function to work in the client. So what we can do is we can actually take this from our server side code and we can put it in our shared code and this is now going to allow us to use this function in both realms. So now if I go ahead and save this. Oops, excuse me. You now see we got 15 plus 30 equals 45, 100 plus 1000 equals 1100 and 47 plus 30 equals 77. And you'll notice the color difference here. Whenever you see something in blue that is a reference to the server. Whenever you see something in this yellowish orange that is a reference to the client. So now we just created a global function that can be accessed in both realms. Um, so that's a quick example of a simple function. I'm going to get into more advanced functions later as we get into meta functions and anonymous functions. So um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. I will try to respond to every single one. Um, and again, just please like and subscribe. I would appreciate that. Take care, guys.